Stand to your feet for a moment, if you will. Next two weeks, we'll be talking through life groups and opportunities to get connected in small groups. And we call them life groups here at Capital Life Church. And there's all types of life groups. You'll have life groups that are adventure life groups. And, and uh, you know, I think of how, and, and Gideon is here. I see Gideon in the back. You know, seeing Gideon in a, in a floatable boat out on the waves as, as uh, Sasan, and I see Priscilla here, uh, you know, as Sasan is, is carrying him and my wife and others out on this boat and letting them come in with each wave while he carries them, you know, and swims back out. And there's just something about knowing Gideon be, be, you know, in that environment beyond the church. I have a photo. I won't put it up. But, but it's, a, it's a fun photo of them in the boat, you know, being tormented by the waves. And, and when you get to know people outside of the setting of simply sitting near them in church, when you get to know somebody's story, you know, I was honored to do uh, Autumn and Gideon's uh, officiate their, their wedding and, and Sasan and Priscilla's wedding and and, and, and walk through life with them. And all my life, I'll walk through your life with you. I make that commitment to do that to the best of my ability. And I hope you'll do the same for me. I have people, I was a chaplain, uh, you know, a university chaplain to this day. And now this is what, uh, eight years later, seven years later from when I was chaplain. To this day, they still email me. They still find me if they come to the D.C. area. The students do. The alums do. Why? Because there was something about walking through life together going on missions together, going on retreats together, connecting in a deeper way. That's what life groups are all about. Bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment. What is amazing is that God loved us enough that he entered all of our stories. He sent his only son, Jesus, to come to earth to live the most beautiful of lives in a three-year ministry that he would have where he would teach the greatest lessons ever taught. He would heal the sick and the lame would walk and, and all of these things, the greatest moral lef- lessons ever taught. But more than that, he would go to the cross because only he could die for our sins. He himself, who is God, would die for our sins because God knows what some of us are just starting to find out, that you can't make it to heaven. You can't have eternal life and peace with God without a relationship with him. And Jesus coming to the cross was our way to have a bridge to God, our way to have relationship with God. What my mom would talk to me about that I've mentioned over and over again, that I could know God as real as the breath that I breathe, as real as the heart that beats in my chest. How can I know God that way? I saw that in my mom. She lived it in my life, but because she entered my life and I had entered hers, she loved me through till I made a commitment. When I made that commitment, I'm telling you, I've never gone back. Jesus is the best friend I've ever had. I've known what it is to know Jesus as real as the breath that I breathe, as real as the heart that beats in my chest. That intimate, that, that intimate. Now is the opportunity for you to know God intimately in that way. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about relationship right now. God entered your story. He's entering your story right now. He's tapping your heart. He's saying, now is the moment. Don't have any question mark over it. Give your heart to me. Let me rule in your life. If you'll give your heart to me, I will pour out blessings. God right now is tapping your heart. I've had some people come to me in this church and say, Pastor, my, my heart beat so fast when you, were, when you were talking about receiving Jesus, and I knew it was me. I knew it was me. And that's why I responded to receive Jesus as my Savior. I could sense that God's presence was on me to make that decision. If, if that's you, will you pray this prayer with me and let's all join together. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I am a sinner. I fall short of the glory of God. Right now I repent. I give my life to you. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are my Savior, that you are my Lord. If you prayed that prayer right then, as every head is bowed, every eye closed, I want you to know that supernatural activity is happening that no man can do. God himself heard your prayer. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, If you prayed that prayer because you meant it with all your heart, 
You say, yes, pastor, I needed to know. I couldn't leave here with a question mark. And I prayed that prayer, and I meant it. And I gave my heart to Jesus right then. Or I've returned to Jesus right at that moment to my first love. Will you lift your hand and put it back down? All across this place, we've seen it week by week. Yes, sir. Who else? Have the courage to do it. If that's you and your heart is beating fast, it's because God's doing something in you right now. Who else? Who else? People listening right now and watching by YouTube and podcasts, this is your moment. If you'll just bow your head right now and say, I mean that. I prayed that prayer. That matters to me. God, take my life and make it all together yours. Heavenly Father, we give you glory. God, we pray that we will see people in a new way, that we will not be muted in the way we see others or our world, but instead that we will enter into stories and then enter your story into the stories of people. Oh, God, you are so awesome. And we give each one here to you. God, pour out your blessings and let them leave here into a tremendous week of wonderful favor in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said a triumphant. Amen. Amen. God bless you and you are dismissed.